Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the 2022 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream where we dyed some yarn inspired by this gorgeous rainbow image. And during the live stream, because of Pride Month, we did a fundraiser for the Trevor Project and we raised $470. I want to thank you all so much who donated to such a wonderful cause. The Trevor Project provides crisis intervention for LGBTQ and questioning youth. And this is an organization that I believe is really, really important. Oh my goodness, you guys, I just went and checked uh, because I wanted to extend the date of this fundraiser so that way I could apply it to this video as well. So if you go to the bottom of this video, you can donate to the Trevor Project and YouTube will cover all of the payment transaction fees. Your donation will go directly to the Trevor Project and you'll get a donation receipt that you can use for tax purposes if you itemize your taxes. But we just passed the goal of $500 when I went to go check at the time I'm filming this. But even though we reached my goal, we can still raise more for them. And so please go check that out. I will also have a link to their website down in the video description. I just swapped the order a little bit. In the live stream, we dyed three different colorways of roving. This was Nitpick's Wool of the Andes Worsted Roving. And the colors in here actually cleared after about 24 hours. It's been a few more days, but if I pull this to the side, I see a hint of some color, but most of the color is in the fiber. And so during the live stream, this was the first one I did. I layered on three primary colors and then I sort of squished them together. On this middle one, which looks very similar, uh, I layered on the primary colors but did not squish the yarn. And I'm curious, we got really good penetration of all the colors. And then on this final one, we added some black speckles along the top, treating it otherwise very similar to the first one. And you can see some dark smudges here, especially like on the yellow and orange, although you can see them a little bit over here, but ultimately it's very subtle. And after we steam set, I don't know if we'll be able to tell the difference between this and the first one. Anyway, I'm about to go steam set this all off camera. I'll steam for about 30 minutes and then I will wash it once the fiber has completely cooled. Uh, and I just wanted to show it as it came from these containers uh, before going ahead and steam setting. There are some hints of dye around the edge, but otherwise, I mean, if I pick this up, that's really, really good. And we kept our yellow, at least for now. Hopefully it'll still be there after I steam set. <laughs> Normally I film these recaps as soon as the yarn is dry. However, this time it's the middle of July now that I'm filming the recap, so I'm gonna do my best to remember everything that I did. Uh, but I was able to tell these three groups of roving apart. Um, this one has some hints of black. This one has a little bit more white and purple just at the one end, so it was the second one. And then this one has a little bit of um, some purple leaning segments on both ends, and so I believe that's the first. But I'm gonna go fluff these up and arrange it a little bit nicer. You can see a lot of similarity in each of the rovings, even if they are technically slightly different. But the main thing that you can see now versus when they were in the pan is that there is some variation in the colors. There's some short sections and changes throughout, which will sort of blend this rainbow. Now, someone could spin any of these rovings starting at one end and going all the way to the other and creating a super long gradient, or they could, you could create something more variegated or self-striping depending on the size of the sections that you separate uh, from each of them. I have to say, I found this method of dyeing roving to do this cold process in the shoebox to be really pleasing and less stressful than some hot first techniques I've done in the past. And so, if you'd like to see me do this again in the future, please leave a comment below. But I definitely plan to do this again in the future, so you'll probably get to see that at some point. For Pride Month, I wanted to inject some love into one of the colorways. So on this one, I used the same three primary colors. I believe I used Deep Magenta, Caribbean Blue probably, and Brilliant Yellow from Dharma. 
And I layered hearts, um, layering the different colors so that way we could see all these different rainbow hues. I didn't intentionally press the colors in, but since I flipped and did multiple layers of these colors, they were able to blend to give us the greens, orange, and hints of purple. I have done a lot of debating over the years over like which side I should put the purple on. Sometimes with premixed colors, it feels like the purple fits a little bit better next to a pink than next to the blue. Maybe I wish I had left the blue off of that pink end, but this colorway is festive and fun and, well, I know I injected all of my love into it. For the final colorway, I layered on some more deeper rainbowish hues and speckled them lightly on to our wet yarn. And then I took some black dye that had been mixed with citric acid and speckled that black dye on top of the other colors. The result is this stunning speckled colorway where we both have larger speckles and splotches of our rainbow colors, and then these fine little black speckles as well. I love the way that this combines together, and I really need to play around more with using a combination of speckles, both ones with citric acid and ones without, and layering them on, and then see how that all plays together. The yarn mop I dyed while speckling looks really, really similar to the skeins that have the black speckles. It's just here, we have a few larger black splotches and more all over color. This also kind of shows why I picked this more golden yellow and used that as both the yellow and orange. A lot of times when you have a yellow pigment, when it's really concentrated, it leans orange. And so, I don't know, would you have added, say, a saffron spice to give a richer burnt orange into this mix? Or did this yellow orange sort of tie the rainbow theme together enough for you? Don't get me wrong, I love the colorway, but it's always fun to hear what you all would do differently. And now speaking of how all of you may do things differently from how I do it, it's time for my favorite part of these dye long recaps where I share some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. What kind of fiber did you decide to dye? What kind of techniques did you use? What kind of dyes and actual colors did you pull? Did you take the more muted rainbow that was from the inspiration photo literally, or did you lean into the photograph and pull rainbows and use it as a jumping point? If you would like to be featured in future Chemnitz Dye Along recaps, just share your photo on Instagram with the Chemnitz Dye Along hashtag, or reply to the inspiration photo on the public Chemnitz Facebook page. Thank you so much to everyone who dined along with me this month, and the July Chemnitz Dye Along photo is either up now or will be up shortly um, with the date for the newest live stream so we can have some more fun together. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. I try to schedule the dye long live streams a few days in advance, but sometimes my live streams can be a little bit more last minute, and if you have your notifications on, that's the best way that you can be notified of a new stream and not miss anything. And once again, please go and check out the Trevor Project's website so you can learn more about this great organization, and if you would like to contribute to my fundraiser or make a donation to them directly through their website, that would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching.